हरे कृष्णा ओम ज्ञान तिमिरांध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुरुन्नील तम्येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापितम ये न भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वपदांतिकम वन्दे हम श्री गुरु श्री युतपद कमलम श्री गुरुन वैष्णवांश्च श्री रूपम साग्रजातम सहगण रघुनाथान वितंतम सजीवम साद्वैतम सावधूतम परिजन सहितम कृष्ण चैतन्य देवम श्री राधा कृष्ण पादां सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान वितांश्च नम ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे वाछा कल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर शिवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर अमंगस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू एंड इन पर्टिकुलर to get the association of his holiness bhakti dhir damodar swami maharaj a very dear friend to me i have not met him for many years i remember fondly our meetings in vrindavan time to time and i am very happy maharaj to be with you again and to offer some service to you and the devotees in this series of lectures on lord ram it is very nice that you are organizing these lectures for devotees from around the world wherever they may be it is very nice to be absorbed in the pastimes of the supreme lord and thank you for facilitating this and inspiring so many devotees in their krishna consciousness so today thank you very much maharaj for the lectures we are deeply honored to have you hari krishna and, uh, yes we would like to hear from you thank you <coughs> so the topic that uh, i was requested to speak on is the qualities of lord ram and specifically focusing on patience courage compassion and gratitude and before we specifically get into these four qualities i want to give a very brief background in the valmiki ramayan it opens with valmiki addressing narad muni Narad Muni has just arrived at the ashram of Valmiki Muni and Valmiki Muni asks Narad Muni whether there is any ideal person present on earth now who is endowed with all good qualities gunavan and he also mentions a list of other qualities that this ideal person should have for example that he should be most learned he should be most powerful he should have all attractive bodily features and so on and so forth so he lists about 15 such qualities narad muni is very pleased to reply and he says yes indeed even at this point in time there is such a great personality who is present here on this earth planet who embodies all the qualities that you have mentioned o sage valmiki and he has many more he is shri ram who is the descendant of king ikshvaku he is appeared in the ikshvaku dynasty 
the solar dynasty and he is the son of King Dasharath. He is the embodiment of all good qualities, everything divine. Narad Muni goes on to enumerate no less than 67 such qualities of Lord Ram. <coughs> now, of course, as we all know, the Supreme Lord is unlimited in every respect. Therefore, he is also unlimited in terms of the divine qualities that he possesses. In the Bhagavatam also we hear that there is no end to the qualities of the Lord and no one can count the Lord's qualities. Even Anantashesha, who has been enumerating the qualities of the Lord from time immemorial, has not been able to attain the conclusion of that description and he will continue for time into time eternity and still will not be able to count all the divine qualities of the Lord. <clears throat> but that said, many great devotees of the Lord like Narad Muni, they sometimes pick out the chief qualities, those qualities that are most notable, noteworthy and relevant and relatable to human beings in particular. <clears throat> and then they uh, mention them and sometimes also they elaborate on them. So Lord Ram has appeared in this world to demonstrate and exhibit the ideal qualities that a human being should have. He demonstrates it through his own personality, his own words and his own actions and thought processes. He remains the Supreme Personality of Godhead at all times. But nevertheless, because he has appeared within the human society, it appears to everybody that he is also a human being. But we must never forget that despite his human-like appearance and the human-like exhibition of qualities of eating, sleeping, speaking, moving around, walking, etc., <coughs> that he remains the Supreme Lord at all times. Whichever, whichever species of life that the Lord appears in, the Lord enacts pastimes that are in conformity with the general pattern of actions that the living entities in that species perform. So when the Lord appears as a, in, the, in the human species, then he acts like a human being but because he's a Supreme Lord, he shows us what an ideal human being should be. <coughs> and therefore, he's called Maryada Purushottam. So, Maryada means etiquette. Purushottam means the topmost person. So, Lord Ram represents the topmost in terms of character, in terms of conduct, in terms of qualities that any human being can possibly possess. Therefore, when we study uh, the qualities, the pastimes, etc. of Lord Ram, we understand what qualities we as human beings should try to imbibe. Even if we are not devotees, even if we are not on the spiritual path, we are ultimately human beings, so we should try to imbibe these qualities and at least understand the need for developing these qualities and for such qualities to exist in human society. And all the more so when we are practicing devotees and we want to become pure devotees of the Lord, how much more important then is it for us to try to develop these qualities by first understanding how the Supreme Lord and his great devotees exhibit such qualities. So let's, with this brief background, let's now discuss briefly each of these four qualities. And since these qualities pertain to the Supreme Lord, they are also endless. What to speak of the unlimited number of qualities that the Lord has? If you pick up even one of these qualities, the discussion on that one quality of the Lord will also be endless. Because there are so many pastimes, 
there is so much glorification of the Lord's that particular quality that comes out through his pastimes and that have been glorified by the great devotees in history that it will also be endless. Nevertheless, we have only a limited time. So I will try to speak about these four qualities in brief, just giving an outline. The first quality is the quality of patience. Whether we have patience or not, we are certainly familiar with this term. And as devotees, we understand how important it is for us to have this quality in the practice of our devotional service. And in the nectar of instruction, we are told by Srila Rupa Goswami, Utsahan Nishchayat Dhairyat. <clears throat> we are all familiar with this verse. And Rupa Goswami says that among the qualities that are necessary and favorable for advancement in devotional service, the qualities of utsaha or enthusiasm, nishchaya, that means conviction and determination, <coughs> and dhairyat, dhairya means patience and fortitude are very necessary. So patience is a very important quality, particularly as devotees, but even ordinarily in life in the material world. Because patience means the ability to endure and wait. <clears throat> it is the ability or the, the mental fortitude to not w expect results immediately. <clears throat> because when we want things very quickly, prematurely, without the sufficient effort and passage of time, then that is a quality of the mode of passion in excess and very often that may jeopardize and spoil the outcome. So even in ordinary life, patience is very important for us. <clears throat> of course, patience is also tempered with many other qualities. In the Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 10, text 34, Krishna speaks about patience and fortitude as being kshama. And Srila Prabhupada, in his purport there, explains what exactly patience means. He says, and I quote here, when one is fully qualified and yet is humble and gentle, and when one is able to keep his balance in both sorrow and in ecstasy of joy, he has the opulence called patience. So there are two aspects to the word patience here. One is that even though one is fully qualified, one still remains humble and gentle. That's the first aspect of patience. And the second aspect is that one keeps one's balance and equanimity even in the midst of sorrows or in ecstasy or joy. And Srila Prabhupada says this quality of patience is an opulence. So that's a very significant statement to make. So these qualities are opulences. So one who is endowed with qualities like the ones that are described in Bhagavad Gita and the ones that have been exhibited by Lord Ram, that person actually is very opulent. <clears throat> Opulence is not to be considered only in terms of gold and silver and money and, and possessions of this world. But opulence, truly speaking, is to be understood in terms of the kind of divine qualities that we are able to inculcate into our life. <coughs> so, in the uh, Valmiki Ramayana, right in the beginning, when Narad Muni is responding to the question of Valmiki Muni, as he is enumerating the 67 divine qualities, he mentions in relation to Lord Ram, Dhairena Himavaniva, that Lord Ram is like the Himalayas in fortitude and patience. The mountain just remains there, enduring so many things, patiently, just waiting. So there are many instances of Lord Ram 
exhibiting this quality of patience. And as, <coughs> and as I mentioned earlier, it is not possible to discuss all these pastimes elaborately. So I will just lightly touch upon them. <coughs> the first is of course the fact that he went into exile for 14 long years in the forest, having been a prince and having been accustomed to all sorts of royal comforts. But he was very patient. He did not lose his temper or his patience thinking, when will this period of 14 years elapse? I am not able to tolerate being in this forest. And he didn't try to find shortcuts. He didn't even find any excuse to avoid going to the forest. He happily accepted this order from his father. And he went ahead and patiently spent the 14 years in exile. Now it is a very hard thing to do especially for a royal prince who has been accustomed to comforts, but he did that. And of course, a very famous instance of, of Lord Ram exhibiting the quality of patience is when he was on the shore of the ocean waiting to cross over to reach Lanka and rescue Mother Sita from the clutches of Ravana. So in the Valmiki Ramayana, we have the description of Lord Ram <coughs> arriving on the shore of the Southern Ocean and waiting there in the company of the huge army of Vanaras, the so-called monkeys. Of course, they're not actually monkeys as we understand them. These are also celestial beings and they are a different species, Vanara. Vanara means, um, are they, are they, uh, something like uh, are they humans va and nara so nara so these are human uh, these are so called monkeys but they are in a kind of a very special species and they are endowed with all kinds of heavenly powers and abilities so in any case <coughs> lord ram came there to the shore of the ocean many incidents happened there and lord ram or was thinking, now I have to cross over the ocean to go to Lanka to kill Ravana and rescue Sita Devi. But he did not do that. He did not act as the Supreme Personality of Godhead then. What is difficult for Lord Ram to do in terms of crossing an ocean? In a, in a moment, he could have dried up the ocean he could have enabled the entire army to cross over by air or walking over the water or drying up the ocean. After all, as a Supreme Lord, he is possessed of incomparable and unlimited potencies. He can do anything he likes. He is the master of innumerable universes. He is the master of the spiritual world. So what is it that is difficult even? what to speak of impossible for the Supreme Lord to do. But he didn't act like that. He acted in a very gentle and humble way. And this, if you remember from Srila Prabhupada's definition of patience, is uh, perfectly befitting. To remind you again, Srila Prabhupada says that when one is fully qualified and is yet very humble and gentle, then he is called patient. So Lord Ram could have in a moment accomplished his purpose. But he realized that I am a human, I am in the acting as a human being. And also I have to respect that the, the uh, demigod in charge of the ocean, Varuna, is very empowered by me and I have to respect him. So I should not act in a way that will humiliate him. So I must offer him due respects. And with my example, I will teach all the living entities or the human beings in particular how they must respect uh, respectable entities or personalities. So he sat there on the bank of the ocean for three full days and nights on a mat made of kusha grass. He sat there with folded hands 
awaiting the arrival of the ocean god. Now, three days and three nights, from one point of view, may not seem to be a very great length of time. But consider that Lord Ram had very urgent work to do. Sita Devi was there in captivity of Ravana and Ravana had given her a warning and a time limit because Sita Devi refused to accept the invitations of Ravana. Ravana became furious and he said that I will give you one year in which you have to make up your mind to accept me. And Sita Devi of course was not at all going to do that. And Ravana threatened her and said that if you don't accept then I will be forced to kill you, to end your life. So uh, the time was running out, there was barely a month left for that one year to get over. And therefore Ram did not have much time to spare. And on the other hand, in near Ayodhya, his younger brother Bharat was worshipping uh, Lord Ram's sandals, placing them on the throne and he was ruling the kingdom on behalf of Lord Ram as a representative and a servant. And he had also proclaimed that if Lord Ram had not come, would not come back to Ayodhya in 14 years, then he would give up his life too. So then this was a predicament. So then, uh, considering that the uh, urgency of the matter at hand was so grave, still, even in spite of that, Lord Ram very patiently sat there for an entire three days and three nights. Generally, when you're about to embark on a mission to save somebody, you know, let's say an army is sending somebody to do a mission in enemy territory, they are in a hurry, they have to be patient, but they also have a job to do. So then they can't sit and just wait for three days doing nothing. But Lord Ram actually sat and waited patiently for three days and three nights in all humility with folded hands. And when after three days and three nights were over and the ocean god did not still appear, Lord Ram became furious and he shot his arrow into the sea and so powerful was the impact of that arrow that it caused great agitation in the waters of the ocean and all the residents of the ocean began to panic in great fear and Lakshman begged of Lord Ram to, to not do any further especially when he saw that Lord Ram had now taken out his Brahmastra weapon, the deadly weapon that could cause enormous destruction. But at, just at that time, the ocean god appeared with folded hands and begged forgiveness. And he said that, my dear Lord, it is the eternal nature of the elements of nature, like earth, water, fire, ether, to have certain qualities. So it is the quality of the ocean to be filled with water and to flow in such a manner. And it is very unnatural for something like this to happen where the water will part or the water will get dried up and so on. But nevertheless, I am at your service and with my power, I will help the stones to float. So kindly go ahead with your associates and build a bridge and I will ensure with my power that these stones will float and form a bridge by which you can cross over. So in this way, uh, Varuna, the deity of the ocean, uh, cooperated and served the Supreme Lord. The question may be asked, we are talking here about the quality of patience, but it appears that Ram was impatient because after three days, he actually punished uh, the, uh, the god of the sea. But actually, I've already mentioned two reasons uh, that were very 
that caused a great deal of urgency and despite that Ram waited for three days and three nights. So when something is not urgent, one may be patient for a prolonged period and that is understandable. But when something very urgent has to be done and there is a great necessity for it to be done very quickly and if it is not done then there will be very disastrous consequences, then patience cannot be unlimited because patience is not a quality that can be seen in isolation of everything else. Let's say that you are walking with somebody and uh, some criminal comes and apprehends your associate and you cannot simply be patient and say we will wait. No, you have to intervene at that time to save the life of that person. So there are other qualities that have to be seen uh, alongside patience. So when we speak of divine qualities, they have to be seen in the context of the situation. So uh, patience has to be qualified also sometimes, for example, with justice or the need to be compassionate or to save the life of another person. And also another interesting point here is that these divine qualities, they may be exercised differently by brahmanas, by kshatriyas, etc. So what may be patience for a brahmana may not be the right thing for a kshatriya to do beyond a point because a kshatriya has to be very active and meet out justice. A brahmana may be willing to wait and wait but a kshatriya in certain situations uh, is forced by his nature and by the circumstances and by force of the duties that he is supposed to perform to actually not be patient in certain circumstances. So therefore Lord Ram was patient when it was needed for three full days in even very extenuating circumstances but when that time elapsed then yes then he said okay now the time is gone and I must also do what is right for me, what is my duty as a Kshatriya. Now, patience, especially for a Kshatriya, does not mean tolerating the bad behavior of somebody beyond a point. Beyond a point when there is bad behavior, then that bad behavior needs to be punished. So a Kshatriya is the one who punishes. So therefore Lord Ram was acting as a Kshatriya. So he exhibited both the qualities of patience and also his quality as a Kshatriya where he was expected to meet out justice. So this is something about the quality of patience. Secondly is the quality of courage. Now in the Bhagavad Gita we know from the 18th chapter that Lord Krishna describes the qualities of Akshatriya Shauryam Tejo Dhritir Dakshyam Yudhe Cha Apalayanam Danam Ishwara Bhavascha Kshatra Karma Svabhavajam So he outlines uh, nine qualities here in which uh, there is Shauryam that refers to you know heroism there is Tejaha, that is power. Third is Dhritihi, that is determination. Daksham, that is resourcefulness. So seven qualities, I beg your pardon, not nine. Nine is for Brahmanas. So Daksham, resourcefulness. Fifth is Yudhe Cha Apalayanam. Yudhe means in battle. Palayanam means to flee. Apalayanam means to not flee. So a Kshatriya should never flee in battle, which means the Kshatriya should be steadfast and courageous in the face of very dangerous situations in battle when he's facing an enemy. The next quality is Dhanam, generosity, and then Ishwara Bhava, which means leadership. So courage, as indicated in the word Yudhe Cha Apalayanam, that is courage in battle, was exemplified or demonstrated by Lord Ram on numerous occasions. 
when Lord Ram was only a young lad, Vishwamitra Muni came to the uh, court of King Dasharat and asked for a, a asked for some help. And uh, Dasharat Maharaj, as was his nature as a very pious uh, king who was very respectful to brahmanas and saintly people, he said, definitely, whatever you wish, O great sage, it will be my great pleasure and honor to fulfill. When Vishwamitra Muni asked for Ram and Lakshman to accompany him to his ashram to kill, uh, many demons who were causing a great disturbance in that area, King Dasharat became very nervous and aggrieved and fearful. In any case, Vasishta Muni also convinced him to let Ram and Lakshman go because they were all powerful and not, no harm could ever come to them. So they accompanied Vishwamitra Muni. And when they reached to uh, the bank of the Ganga at a particular location, they came to a forest that was very desolate and that had overgrown itself with trees and bushes and so on. And Vishwamitra Muni explained the reason for that. He said that this was a history, this had place had a very rich history and it was very pious. But a demoness called Tataka came here and started terrorizing all the inhabitants of this place. So, by the way, terrorism has a long history. It is not only something that is a phenomenon that we see in our modern times. Terrorists have been there for a long time. In all ages, Satya, Treta, Dwapar and Kali. So, in any case, so because of the terrorism of Tataka, all the residents left and this forest became very desolate and overgrown. So Lord Ram, even though he was a young lad at that time, he killed this fierce demoness called Tataka. Now she also had a son called Maricha. And going further down, when Vishwamitra Muni brought Ram and Lakshman to a place called Siddhashram, where his ashram was located, and he indicated that there were many uh, demons, Rakshasas actually, who used to come to haunt that place and would create a great disturbance in many ways. So once when these, uh, when Ram and Lakshman were living at Siddhashram, these demons came, led by Subahu and Maricha. So uh, Lord Ram stood his ground and he killed Subahu by striking him uh, on his body with his powerful arrows. And then he remembered, he also knew that Marich was still destined to live. His time had not passed yet. Because Marich would do some service later, just prior to the time of abduction of Sita. He had a role to play there. So Lord Ram knew that his time, his destiny was not over yet. So he struck an arrow and flung him into the middle of the ocean, far, far away. And then there were many other Rakshasas, demons, who were accompanying them. And Lord Ram also dispersed them all very easily. So this is one, uh, these are some instances of Lord Ram demonstrating his courage, even as a young lad. Later on, when Ram and Lakshman, along with Sita Devi, went into the forest in exile, they reached the Panchavati forest after having crossed Chitrakoot and they were at a place called Janasthan. This is the place where Ram was approached by Shurpanakha who was the sister of Ravana. She was also a Rakshasi, a demoness and she was attracted by the beauty of Lord Ram. But Lord Ram said, I have taken a vow to accept only one wife. And so he pointed to Lakshman, but Lakshman also refused. He said, I have already committed myself to serving Ram here and I don't have any inclination or time to accept any other service or any other relationship. Then she got so angry, she attacked Sita. At that time, 
Uh, Lakshman cut off the nose and ears of Shurpanakha. She went crying loudly to a nearby place where her brother Khara lived along with other demons like Dushana and so on. So initially Khara, being enraged with this, sent 14 powerful Rakshasas. But Ram killed them very easily. And he told Lakshman, please place Sita in a cave and you stand guard outside and don't budge from there. I will tackle the Rakshasas as they come. And then Khara and Dushan became so furious they personally came along with 14,000 other Rakshasas and they attacked Lord Ram who was standing there alone. Lord Ram stood there with firm firmly placing his feet on the ground and he did not move from there. And he stood there in that exact same place for one and a half hours and in that time period he killed all the demons who had come there all 14,000 of them. So in this way he demonstrated his quality of courage. And now we come to the quality of compassion. It is also a quality that is very important for us to cultivate in spiritual life. But even in ordinary life, compassion is a very important quality. Sometimes we see this quality even in animals they also exhibit quality, uh, compassion and kindness. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 16th chapter, when Lord Krishna describes the divine qualities, Daivim Prakritim, he speaks about compassion as being Daya Bhuteshu. Having compassion upon all living entities is one of the many six, uh, divine qualities. So Lord Ram, was not just Bhakta Vatsala, one who was very affectionate to his devotees and kind and compassionate upon them. But in the Ramayana, he has also been uh, addressed as Ripunam Vatsala. A ripu indicates uh, an enemy. So Lord Ram was kind and compassionate even to those who were his enemies. And there are many examples of how he was compassionate to devotees, to those who were just ordinary human beings or in other species of life, and even those who were his enemies and demons. For example, when Ram and the armies of Sugriva were waiting at the shore of the ocean uh, for the ocean to uh, demigod to appear, Ravana sent a spy who took the form of a bird. The name of the spy was Shuka. And he came there and he spoke to Sugriva. And he tried to induce him to leave the service of Lord Ram. He gave the message of Ravana to Sugriva by saying that Sugriva, I have no quarrel with you. I have caused you no harm. So why have you gathered your armies to fight against me? So immediately all the monkeys, the monkey soldiers, the Vanaras rather, they caught hold of this uh, bird who was actually a Rakshasa and they cut off his wings and beat him very badly. But then Lord Ram intervened because the Shuka appealed to Lord Ram that I am merely an envoy and it is not correct that an envoy should be harmed in this way. There was this etiquette in diplomacy that an envoy is never to be harmed. So Lord Ram said, okay, don't kill him. Uh, but then uh, the other uh, monkey soldiers, they describe that actually this is a spy and he needs to be bound. Uh, so then Lord Ram agreed. When Shuka appealed to Lord Ram again, he said, we will not kill you, but we will keep you bound. We will not let you go back because you will go and reveal all the secrets about our army here. So we will release you once, once we reach Lanka. So Ram became very compassionate upon him. He could have easily killed him. The, the soldiers of Sugriva were very eager to do that. 
but Ram was very compassionate upon Shuka and he let him survive and when they reached Lanka he released him. Another pastime that we see is that once there was a crow, actually it was the son of Indra who approached Sita Devi and who bit her tender body and some blood came out from the body and Ram was so enraged he picked up a blade of grass and used it as a Brahmastra weapon. At that time that crow begged forgiveness and Ram forgave that crow but because the Brahmastra had to be used he used it only to deprive the crow of one eye but he did not kill the crow Jayanta who was a son of Indra and he was kind and um, forgiving upon him. Similarly Shurpanakha when she attacked Sita, Sita Devi, uh, Lakshman or Ram could have, Lakshman wanted to kill her but Lord Ram forbade Lakshman from doing this. So he showed compassion even to Shurpanakha. Similarly at the time of Ravana's uh, death as Ravana lay on the battlefield after having been killed by Lord Ram and his queens were there lamenting over him. Uh, Lord Ram asked Vibhishan to perform the last rites, the cremation for his brother. Vibhishan said, my brother is such a distasteful person. He has performed such sinful activities <clears throat> that I have no heart to, com to perform the uh, ceremonies, the death ceremonies for my brother, even though he was elder to me. Therefore, I, uh, my request is to not have any cremation. But Lord Ram prevailed upon him. He said, no, it is not right. In any case, Lord Ram, uh, the battle is now over and all hatred should cease and the hostility should cease when there is death. So it is only proper for you as a younger brother to perform the last rites of Ravana. So even in death, Lord Ram was kind upon Ravana. And he said that he should be given a dignified departure from this world in terms of uh, performing the last rites, the cremation rites. So if he was like this towards even those who were envious of him, we can imagine how kind he was to his devotees, to his mother's Kaikei and to her maidservant Mantara who were instrumental in getting Ram, Sita and Lakshman exiled in the forest. Ram was very compassionate upon them and he forbade Bharat from harming them and he urged Bharat, Shatrugna and Lakshman to also be very kind and loving to Kaikei and Mantara despite all that they had done. So Ram was very compassionate and he understood that this is my mother. I cannot be cruel to her. Similarly, when there was this little squirrel who came to offer some service by flicking some grains of sand into the ocean to help the Vanaras build the bridge and Hanuman apparently at one point made a little fun of him then Lord Ram uh, told Hanuman that the service that you are doing is as valuable to me as the service that the squirrel is doing. The squirrel may be doing something very insignificant by your standards but the power that I have given you is actually my power and I have also given the squirrel power. So therefore uh, you are both equal to me. So he was very compassionate upon the squirrel and ensured that the squirrel would also be able to participate in the building of the bridge. Similarly, there are many other stories. He was compassionate upon Shabari, who had been waiting and we saw that little drama of Shabari being enacted by the children from Nigeria. Shabari had been waiting patiently for many, many years for the arrival of Lord Ram. <clears throat> Her guru had prophesied and told her that Ram will come here. He will come here to see you and, and bestow his mercy upon you. And she was there alone despite her god brothers discouraging her 
beyond the point after many years had gone. But then many of her god brothers became old, they also passed away, but Shabari remained there alone, waiting every single day. Okay, Ram will come today. And then finally Ram, Ram came, he did not forget. He came there only to bestow his mercy upon Shabari. He could have gone in another direction, but he came here and, and was very compassionate towards Shabari. So there are many such instances of the compassion of Lord Ram. And finally, we come to the fourth quality for today, and that is gratefulness or gratitude. In Sanskrit, this is referred to as Kritagnyata, Kritagnya. One who is always conscious of the good that someone has done to him. Kritagnya, Gnya means to know. That one should always know, one should never forget the good that is done to us by other people. That not forgetting the good that others have done to oneself and therefore acting appropriately towards that person is called gratitude. And that quality is also visible in all the great saints, the devotees and also in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality never forgets even the smallest service that has been rendered. Ishwara Svabhava Bhaktir Na Loy Aparad Alpa Seva Bahu Mani Atma Paryanta Prasad In the Chaitanya Charita Amrita, Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that the quality of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is that he doesn't take any offenses committed by his devotees seriously at all. On the contrary, if the devotee has offered him even very little service, alpa seva, the Lord considers that alpa seva or very little seva to be something very great, enormous, bahumani. And the Lord becomes so grateful for that little service that the devotee has rendered to him that sometimes he even sells himself Atma Paryanta Prasad he even gives himself up utterly to that devotee who has offered even a little bit of service this is the quality of gratitude that is exhibited by the Supreme Lord and we see this also in the case of Lord Ram when they were going around, Ram and Lakshman were searching for Sita after she had been abducted by Ravana. They came across Jatayu, who was in his last moments of life. Jatayu was in great pain and he explained what had happened, that Ravan was carrying away Sita and Jatayu, he interrupted, he, he actually stopped him and fought with Ravana. And Jatayu said, I'm a very old man. I don't have the old uh, in age now. And I don't have the kind of strength left anymore. But still I tried to fight with Ravana and stop that vile person from abducting Sita Devi. And ultimately Ravan, of course, defeated Jatayu, cut off his wings. And Jatayu lay there, collapsed on the ground. When Lord Ram and Lakshman understood that this was Jatayu, a friend of Dasharat Maharaj and this was the great service he had done in trying to save Sita from Ravana. Ram became his eyes filled with tears and when Jatayu passed away in his arms he personally carried his body and cremated him with his own hands and he spoke many many words of gratitude glorifying uh, Jatayu. Similarly after Lord Ram had returned to Ayodhya being victorious and the Vanara Sena, the army of monkeys and everybody had come back and Lord Ram in the ceremony of his consecration he began to offer his gratitude to all those great devotees of his who had undertaken great hardships to serve him in the forest. 
he began by thanking hanuman he thanked sugriva he thanked vibhishan he thanked um, you know all the soldiers in the army and everybody who had participated and he glorified each of them as if he had thousands of mouths and that was heartfelt gratitude that came from lord ram's mouth and along with sita devi uh, they gave expen he gave expensive gifts to each of these soldiers including hanuman and he said that these gifts are not adequate compensation they do not express my gratitude sufficiently but it is only a small token of my gratitude towards the seva that you have done in this way lord ram has taught us that we should always be very grateful to those who help us in any way even if those people are non devotees but if they have done something to help us we must never forget that service that we have received so gratitude is a very important quality uh, in devotional life in particular and in human life in in general so these are the four qualities that i have tried to discuss in brief hare krishna and my gratitude to all of you for having given me the opportunity to speak a few words glorifying lord ram and in particular my thanks once again to his holiness bhakti dheer damodar swami maharaj for the wonderful service that he is doing and for the wonderful guidance that he is doing for all of you in your devotional service all glories to shri ramachandra si sita ram ki jai shri lakshman hanuman ki jai shri la prabhu pad ki jai gaur premanande hari hari bol hare krishna jai shri sarvin maharaj ki jai jai hare krishna i remember i was i was in vrindavan and uh, i somehow knew the arrangement for the state so when i arrived there i was i was wondering with the state and after the sure the pakina sat maharaj was temple president in mandar of burga first i met him there the second we met him in town so maharaj saw me when i was no photo visited when he was in Burga and I saw his projects very big. When we were going there, I was wondering if he had given the place as an end. He was just going, 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 going inside. It was a big place and he had a very natural, natural stuff. Very natural. Everything is natural. Ashram, everything was perfectly constructed. Till now, till now. is developing developing that place so we we are generally interested and appreciate here the lot the recycle and then after so many years we also met in the new delhi so uh, and we are greeting and talk about each other <coughs> so we can say you know before i was was preaching uh, I'm very careful I take care of my body. <laughs> so yes, let us take care of our body. It's not like this. Because we, we need to do our service, to do our part. So I always remember this truth is given to us. And here we come back to speak. You can see how it's very comfortable, very smooth. It's just flowing very easy like, like the... And he's not doing anything. He's just slowly going sweet, sweet, sweet. I was thinking, I uh, hope he's not strong, but he's just continuing. <laughs> so we can really enter into Ram, Ram, Lina, Ram, Acha, and, uh, and uh, enjoy us.
our same legacy is not a big issue. Like you say, we have everything outside the church, so we, we are taking great credit. I hope the, the surprise is out for you, Maharaj. We are grateful to have you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And Maharaj, I hope we meet up soon sometime. Yes, yeah. Hare, Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj, thank you very much, Maharaj, for so beautifully elaborating on the four qualities, uh, uh, patience, courage, compassion, and gratitude. And you gave so many examples, Maharaj, with, uh, which, which was so pertinent and very easily understandable. Maharaj, if you permit, can we take one question? We have one devotee's hand raised. Yes. 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 So we like to request Mataji. She is Upanishad Mataji. Mataji, you can unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Pranams. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj Prabhu, uh, this was so very wonderful, so touching. The past times were uh, just made my heart melt. Um, one specifically on the being grateful and having compassion just really wanted me to reach out to ask you about that particular pastime with the crow and how Lord Ram, you know, he, he didn't want to, um, he didn't want to destroy the crow. He didn't want to kill him, but he also used the weapon, the master weapon. And out of a straw, out of a blade of grass, is that what you said? Yes. Where can I read that pastime? I, I, I just, but he had to use the weapon. He could not, could, once he, um, I guess once he evoked the weapon, he had to use it. Is that's that right. Saying? Yes, that's right. So it was like, you know, it couldn't go to waste. Yes, <laughs> yes. And that's therefore amazing. he... That was amazing to me, you know, because once he evoked it, he had to use it. So, Correct. Wow, that was... That and was a realization for me. And also... Um, the compassion that he shared with the uh, uh, Lord Ram, he just has so much, he's very, he makes you very emotional. <laughs> he's just, you know, he's so sweet at the same time. And um, I just wanted to ask you about that pastime, where can I find it uh, so I can read it again and, and enjoy it. It Are is, you, thank you. Thank you for your comments. You will find it in the Valmiki Ramayan. The, in the narrative form, this pastime does come there about the crow. So uh, you can take a look at that. So you made some good okay. points. Yes. And also, I wanted to uh, offer my sincere being grateful for your sharing that wonderful pastime. All of the pastimes were, it's just so many of them. So thank you very much for uh, sharing. And Th being a part of this wonderful service. Thank Hare you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you very much for your question. And once again, once again, Maharaj, thank you so much. We have uh, we have had the opportunity to listen to you. It's our great fortune, Maharaj. And we also like to have your association in our future, in our future programs as well. So thank you, Maharaj, so much for joining us. Thank you all. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna Jai Srila Prabhupada